girl in the shelf was music I grew. He said, head in the middle to cover in the skin. They come for me and place a heavy price upon my head They say I've lived a life of waste and shame They say they'll see me once again when I am gone and dead At night I hear them whispering my name they promised me more agony than any man should feel The blood upon my hand shall be my own Hey, what's up, man? I think it's pretty obvious right about now who you're looking at, but I'll tell you anyhow I'm Shaggy Too Dope, the Southwest Strangler. And I'm Vina J, the Duke of the Wicked. And together we happen to be the, the Insane Clown, Clown Posse. And right about now, it's time to get a big, big, big fat shout out to Hell's Entertainment. They're a media outlet for all touring artists. They offer videography, design work, photography, motherfucking freshology. Are you a touring artist? Do you get out there and grind? Or are you a boring artist? Do you sit home and whine? Because if you're a worker, hook up with Hell's Entertainment. That's right, Hell's Entertainment. You can reach them at www.hellentertainment.com. And if you're not done with that, go to hell. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the 24th edition of Sinner Sundays. Woo! As always, <laughs> make sure you check out our Demon of the Month, Amy Young from Amy Young Photography. Like always, you can find her on Hell Entertainment sites, all her social sites, amyyoungphotography.com, and all of that good stuff. Also, as usual, please go out and support Kinko, still fighting the fight from his tragic stroke. Uh, Teespring there for the Kinko Strong t-shirt, PayPal. Donate whatever you can if you can. Whatever you can support would be great. Also tonight, in the pit. We know. I'm pumped about this one. Yeah, good friends of ours. Longtime friends of Hell Entertainment. Illegal. Um, coming in with some, some terror readings. Talking about what she's been up to. Um, and everything else. So, yeah. Good times, good times. What's up, everybody? Hey. How are we? Uh, you notice we are one short tonight. Christina is currently on mission in a hallway. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> um, I like that. Yeah, she's on special assignment right now. <laughs> in a hallway? Yeah, yes. Yeah, our good friend here is joining us as our third person. I never caught his name, though. He just decided to hop in. What do you mean? I never caught his name. It's from Mars Attacks. Oh, is it? Yeah. That was our playlist. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> tonight, we are on the topic of aliens. aliens. Um, all right, here's my opinion about them. I think you're very, you're, you're naive if you don't think there are other beings in the universe. Because the universe is freaking huge. We have no idea about we actually know more about space than we do about our ocean. That's on a location that we live. Yeah. And I mean, I think aliens are in the ocean too. What do we think? Aliens? What I do think, you think? I think they're out there. 100%. I think there's a world out there that's mimicking ours. Maybe better than ours. <laughs> <laughs> Um, like that, like a, there's like a better, there's an alien version of you, but it's, it's better. Oh, it's way better than this version. <laughs> this is like Dig 2.0. Uh, but we'll never know, or we will know. But I feel like if you meet your alien, you'll like combust or something. You think so? You think it's like time travel? I don't know. I don't know. We don't know. But I do know that it's starting to come out in the news a little bit more because. The government need, need something else to distract y'all with. <laughs> or are we the aliens? From somewhere else. Are we the 100%. alien planet and someone's thinking 
yeah. what is there other life form out there? Do we live on a raindrop on a leaf? Like the alien, there's a movie that that happened. Isn't that Men in Black? I, I don't so. know. Either way. Aliens in the ocean. Aliens in the ocean. There are some freaky fish in the fucking ocean. I believe. Exactly. And, and like I said, we know more about space than we know about our own ocean. I forget the exact percentage, so I don't want to say a percentage, but if you Google the percentage of what we know about our ocean, it's not much. It's actually a little scary. So. I mean, it's always scary. Scare the, you know, scare the unknown. Yeah. Of what's out there, because uh, you know, all of a sudden random sightings been coming up, and ever since COVID, the news put out a sighting of a UFO. Um, Horton hears a who? Yep, yep. She's right. Yeah, Horton hears a who? Or they're like, you know, those like weeds that you blow and like the things go. The daffodils. Yeah, I think they have one of those. Yeah. No, but men in black, and then the marble, and they hold the marble. Mm-hmm. <laughs> weird. The aliens are, it's a, it's a weird subject. I mean, what, Steven Spielberg, from what we read, and I was told earlier, oh, wink, yes. wink, Steven Spielberg won't do a movie about negative aliens or mean aliens, because he He believes, won't be mean to them, yeah. Or he won't do a movie portraying mean aliens because... He is he's a believer of aliens and he doesn't want the aliens to come down if and when they do come down and think bad about it. I would think the aliens are like, What the hell are those people doing down there? We ain't coming near you. Like they're way smarter than we are. Oh yeah. <clears throat> you think there's a a photographer, Ashley, out there in a different world? An alien me? Probably. Can the world take two of you? No. <sighs> That's why it's in its own world. But yeah. regardless. <laughs> What's everybody else think? Aliens, yes, no. Anybody? Oh, Christina says hello from the ER hallway. And yes, Some aliens are real. Oh yeah, like men in black, definitely. Oh we got an we got a fun picture. What's that? The other friend picture. Can we put the other friend picture up? Yep, for our wonderful crowd out there. All right. Yeah, shapeshifters are definitely uh look at this guy. Oh yeah, he's over cool. here. I'm poking him in the eye. That's Ashley's friend. Yeah. That's the Ashley in the outer space. <laughs> are aliens mean? Are they nice? Can they talk? Can, well, or probably the, not a language we all understand. That's that's true. I, I, mean, I believe, yeah. I, they probably can understand us. Yeah, they're going to have their own language. But we probably can understand them. No, Christina, I cannot. <laughs> What'd you say? She wants me to do your baby picture as the big, as the big screen. <laughs> probably the resting bitch face one. Oh, yeah. That's a true alien. That would, that would, you know, that'd be a cute one up there. So what else we got on aliens out there? I don't know. I caused a little quiet tonight, but that's all right. Yeah. You know, share, 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 share the show out. As always, we are broadcasting live on Hellfire Radio's Facebook, Hell Entertainment's Facebook, and make sure you check out Hellfire's station on the Live 365 app. Yeah. So when you're at work driving in the car, you can listen to I, um, some pretty kick-ass bands. Just got that, finally. And it's awesome, actually. I really enjoy it. There's so much stuff on it. I know. That's endless, so. And it's free. Who doesn't like free stuff? We always like free stuff. Also, um, Hellfire Radio is looking for people on a podcast, you know, like. Podcast, radio show, talk radio, show. Yeah. Um, all that good stuff. So if you guys are, um, we're also on Instagram Live now. Which we will be later. Which we will be on there later as well. And uh, yeah. Oh, goodness. Look what you did, Christina. I don't know if I can get it. We'll find out. We're bringing a league L on soon, about four or five minutes. (laughs) 
Are you happy? There you go, Christina. That's the alien from the outer space. That's the second Ashley. I keep looking behind me like I can see it. Like, big. <laughs> it's not really there. Oh. Aliens. How do they work? But look at, I got cute ears. <laughs> I saw those cheeks. Oh, how's everyone? How's everyone's weekend going? I hope everyone had a good weekend. We're here to close it out for you. Skitsy's on right after us at ten o'clock. Uh, getting shitsy with Skitsy. That sounds like a fun time. We should get shitsy with Skitsy. We one night. should. We're bringing the Men in Black. They're here to take yeah, care of business. Was I was about. Tommy Lee Jones, Will Smith. What was the dog's name? I forget. Ooh, what if aliens were our pets? Oh, Gen cats are aliens. Jen says cats. Because well, cats are aliens. Cats are little cats bitches. Cats are fucking weird, dude. Cats are assholes. Cats are the best. Cats suck. You suck. Cat team. Crazy cat lady right here. So is Christina. She's a crazy cat lady. Hey, guys, cats are freaking awesome. No, they're not. Like they're aliens and... So... They're aliens and so you what? <laughs> um I saw my kiddo walk by and reminded me that we might be doing an egging tonight. Live Are on, we doing that tonight? Live on the Instagram. Uh, as I put out a post a couple weeks ago, about a hundred comments, and I'll let my daughter egg me live. Well, we got it. I was surprised you thought otherwise. I know. I, I don't usually get any comments anyway on my Facebook. So I just thought. But mm -hmm. I thought wrong. So live on the Instagram tonight, depending whether I will be getting egged. And holding true, holding true to my words, you can check that out on the Hellfire Instagram. Oh, man. You That's how I'm, I like that show you got going there, bud. That's nice. Yeah, it's all right. She's... And a right friend of mine, I guess. Yeah, I can't really. I heard she was a pretty cool chick. Hang on, there we go. It's a good color, orange. It's definitely your color. Orange is my color. Yellow yeah, and orange. Hey, why don't we just do this? Uh -oh. oh, look, we'll put your logo oh. out. See, technology. I heard about this girl. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, check her out. A Grace Photography, A Grace Photography dot com, All about oh, the aliens. That's, that's how that's we do. It. So yeah, tonight's a, a a light show. So uh, we're gonna bring illegal in a in a minute. Light show. Right. It's a light show. You know, we're not. I didn't know we'd have like light and heavy shows. Sometimes we have two interviewees, or yeah, sometimes it's yeah. Sometimes right. it's crazy right before with technical difficulties. Yeah, that's usually. <laughs> it's usually how we roll up until the last minute. That's it. So. We are going to bring Illegal in, talk to her, see what's going on in her world. Hell yeah. And um, get her in here. Oh, wait, she walked away. Well, wait. Where are we? <laughs> hey. Hey, what's going on? What up? How are you? I am wonderful. How are you guys? We doing are good. We're doing, doing good. good. Just relaxing on a nice finally cool sunday the oh, weather wow. finally broke it feels like fall i love it yeah it is it's very fall like today it's yeah. beautiful so what's going on with you what's what, what's new in your world oh my god so i am so happy to be here on the alien episode <laughs> i feel like it's very fitting um but yeah i uh i am an illegal alien from the illy galaxy and I've been up to so much, like literally, like I don't even know where to begin. Well, I mean, when when we first met, you were you were doing music in the independent music scene. Yeah. And um, <laughs> have you re have you stopped doing the music? Are you still doing music? So check this out, you guys. You know what I thought of right before I came on. So this album, my solo album, the one and only. Yep. Just turned ten years old. No way. We're yeah. actually about to play the, uh, that album on our playlist. Yep. <laughs> like, it came out August 10th, 2010. That's crazy. Well, congratulations. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, so I totally missed the anniversary because I've been so busy, but like, yeah, 
shit. This shit's a decade old, fam. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's sick. It's amazing yeah. how time flies. Oh, my God. I know. I know. So, yeah, it kind of sucks that I really haven't been doing much on the music tip uh, since that album dropped. Um, but, you know, it was a fun part of my life, and I, I look back fondly. But as far as, like, the person that I've become, you know, it just doesn't resonate. Um, and, like, also a big thing is, like, the whole legalization movement. Like, that was a big reason that I started rapping in the first place, we, you know, was because of how much I love weed and thought it should be legal. And now it is. And that's what I do for a living. I work at a dispensary now. Um, oh, in Mass, yes. Yeah, in Mass, a recreational dispensary, Nova Farms in mass and it's like a dream come true. So I feel like it was a fun part of my, you know, uh, youth and growing up. And I'm glad that I have like so many memories and stories. And like, this is a record of time right here. You know what I mean? It's what they call it a record. It's a record of time. So like, I'm super proud. And like, I definitely want to make music again. I'm not saying I won't, um, but I think it's going to be way different than anything I've ever done prior to this, so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're actually we're playing some of it right now. Um, Mary Jane is playing right now. Um, so from the transition from music to you're also doing tarot readings now, correct? Yeah, so that's actually a real new thing in my life, the tarot. Um, um, I'm pretty new to the whole thing, but I love it. And it really kept me kind of... Uh, occupied, especially during COVID, um, you know, during quarantine, I live alone. Um, it was something to really uh, dive deep into, um, which I did, but it actually stemmed from um, two years ago, I actually experienced an unfortunate loss in my life. We're coming up on two years of the anniversary. Um, oh. Yeah. So, you know, when that all went down, you know, I felt this person come to me in the cards and that's how I really got into it. Um, I just felt connected with this person in, this, in the deck. Um, I used the Dark Carnival deck um, by Rachel Paul. It's just, it's, if you're a juggalo, uh, you need this in your life, even just as a collector, because the art, uh, the art on this deck is beautiful. Um, you know, if you resonate at all with the Dark Carnival, then, you know, the card will, the cards will speak to you, you know? Um, Hell yeah. So yeah, I like it. It's a lot of fun. I started a YouTube channel. It's called Illy Galaxy. Um, I try to make like one video a week um, and do different types of readings, but it's a lot of fun and I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from it. So yeah, I first, I first saw you doing it on the <laughs> NetFest with Magic Ninja during their whole NetFest concert day long uh, yeah. And I thought it was pretty cool, and I wanted to reach out and chat with you and find out, you know, how you got into it. And then um, Jennifer, my wife, you know, you know her as well. Treats. Yeah, um, what's up, girl? I know it's been so long, but you know, she's asking, and we we all want to know how did you get into it? And I guess how did you when you picked up your first deck? How did you know how to read it? Yeah. yeah so like. I had the OG like Rider Waite deck from years ago. I wanted to get into it, but I just, I never really felt the draw. And, you know, um, after my uh, boyfriend Rob passed away, it was right after the gathering, the Whoopstock gathering, um, he passed away and me and my girl Colin, we did a reading. She had the deck, she had her own deck, the same Dark Carnival deck. And we did a reading and legit every single card that came through was him speaking directly to us. There was no doubt about it. It was just, we like hugged each other and cried and it was like a very spiritual experience. Um, and ever since that moment, I said, you know what? I gotta get my hands on a deck. And uh, you know, I never really had a reading done by I'd say like a professional, you know, like friends would pull cards for me and stuff. But like after that moment, I really was just like so drawn. So I got my own deck and I, started just studying the cards. And like I said, it's easy when you know the images on the cards and what that the meaning is behind the images. Um, so it really helped me to learn. Um, and now I feel like I'm a channel. Like I feel like the cards, like when I do readings for people, like the right cards come through and I do specific readings on my YouTube channel and like the right cards just fall out. And 
So I feel like really in tune. I have a couple other decks. I have the MNE deck um, too, um, but this one really speaks to me. And um, real quick before I forget, I wanted to give a shout out to Chuck Reeves because he's the one who hit me up about NetFest. And he's the one who had the idea of me pulling some cards. And I said, wow, that's a really great idea. And so he kind of like planted this seed and like spawned this whole new endeavor in my life. So um, shout out to him and shout out to the whole Astronomicon NetFest. Uh, that was quite the production. I yes, it was. <laughs> yeah, so it was dope. How, how much studying does it does yeah. go does it does does it take to memorize each card, each face of the card, of what it of what, what it represents? Is, yeah, yeah. There's like I think there's 72 cards total. Yeah. Um, and you often more times often than not like when you're doing a reading for yourself you might get the same cards over and over and so then you definitely start to learn like oh this card again i know i know it but then once in a while you'll get this random card that you never get and you're like wow let me like look into this more so it's just becoming familiar with it um there's a booklet that came with it too um that rachel wrote like all the uh, meanings for her like you know her interpretation of the cards um, but everyone has their own kind of meaning. Like there's an overall general, like, you know, with the major and minor, um, arcana and like the, the, the suits and everything, like there's a general vibe to each card. Um, so it's just learning that. And it's just, like I said, becoming more familiar, you know, like I'm definitely not above like reading from the book or like I have an app on my phone that I use that really goes in depth with all the cards and it's just fun to learn. Um, it's not anything that should be taking like too like too much time or like it's not anything too serious. It's meant to be like some fun spiritual guidance, um, you know, or like maybe messages from loved ones who have passed on, you know, which people find right. hope and faith in. But you know, it's meant to be fun. It's not meant to be anything dark or scary or you know what i mean like i'm just having fun with it so have you ever have you had like any scary experiences so far or everything's been pretty like good and spirit wise <laughs> yeah like that one reading really moved me and there yeah. are there are times where i'll like do a reading and i'll definitely feel Ener energies or you know just a, right. a different vibe in the room but it's always po it's always positive um it's definitely positive and I do it. I do it in the most positive way. So I use a lot of crystals. Um, I use a lot of sage and Palo Santo and candles and you know what I mean? Like I really try yeah. to like the whole experience and respect it. So. Yeah. Our, one of our good friends, Becca does the same and she's like, she's pretty good at it. I want to do my cars once just once, but I was like very <laughs> impressed. Yeah. yeah like, it's crazy to watch. It's definitely not for everyone. Some people are turned off by it, um, but it's definitely gaining a lot of momentum. Um, yeah. I, I watch a lot of other YouTube videos and that's what inspired me to do it was like watching all these other people pull cards and feeling something from their pulls and, and maybe feeling like, oh, well, you know, I have a big juggalo following, you know, maybe I could use this as a tool to, you know, get people more on a spiritual, you know, mindset. Especially these days, I think we could all use a little like nudge from, <laughs> you know, like, hey, you got this. Good vibes. Like, hey, you should <laughs> okay. Like, I remember when I started doing readings during COVID, they were all like, whoa, like a lot of death cards, tower cards, like big abrupt change, you know, and, and we're all in this together. Like, it's a collective thing. Like, nobody's uh, immune from feeling what's going on in the world right now, you know? No, absolutely, oh, yeah. 100 percent agreed. Because um, you're gonna have your naysayers, you're gonna have your believers. Now, before you got your reading, and Rob came to you in those readings, rest in peace, Rob. Um, were you. you a true believer in the, in the tarot readings? Yeah. So I was um, always wanted to get my tarot done at the gathering, and I just, you know what, the, you know, if you guys have gathered, you know, things get crazy. You never have enough time to do what you want to do. But I remember Rob got a reading that year shortly before, you know, everything happened. He actually went and got a reading and I thought that was so cool. And I've always been in, into astrology and obviously like, you know, I've been on this 
I would say spiritual journey since like 2012 when that whole shit popped off. And um, I think it's just been a natural um, thing for me to get into in my life because I'm always, I'm a Gemini. My head is always in the clouds. I'm always in outer space. I'm always thinking about fucking conspiracies and how everything connects and synchronicities and the meaning of life. And sometimes maybe it's because I smoke too much weed and I like think too much about all this crazy shit. But, you know, to me, it's just uh, natural. It was just like a natural thing for me to get into. into That's the- awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Boo, what do you, do uh, you uh, believe in that sort of stuff? Like I, energy and all connecting? I, believe I definitely in the, do. I believe in the energy. I was very skeptical when it came to like the tarot readings and the table tippings and all of that. Um no, like but, I've had some weird shit happen to me, so I definitely <laughs> we had that. a. But that's a little why I'm like not put off, but a little like scared skeptic. about like getting a, like a legitimate tarot reading card. We had tarot. one done at Cambridge's Fair, and a lot of the shit came true. It didn't happen right away, obviously, but right. it it made me think again. Like, the freak out? Kinda. Yeah. It was like this is gonna happen. It happened. This is gonna <laughs> happen. Then it happened. I'm waiting for the third shoe to drop on it. Okay. So we'll see what happens. But as of right now, you know, I'm I'm, I'm a firm believer, you know, and I also believe things happen for a reason. So. Absolutely. Even the bad shit, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Like, I, I am, a, like, I'm firsthand. Like, I just went through two years of, like, really tough things. And I feel like I triumphed over, you know, the hard times. And I'm where I need to be. And I enjoy every moment of life, even the tough moments, you know? So... Uh, our third counterpart who's not here, she's actually uh, sitting in the hallway right now at the ER, uh, is asking, what's your favorite stone? Oh, uh, I have so many. So right now, my favorite is black tourmaline. Um, I've been carrying that a lot with me. Um, It's just for balance. And the energies have just been so crazy lately. Um, I love Moldavite. It's green. It's like supposedly like this alien meteor from another fucking planet it's awesome it's, <laughs> yeah it's super hard to come by and i actually found a guy that makes uh wire pendants on um instagram and he's got one for sale right now and i'm like oh my god i want it so bad but um That's awesome yeah i love i have quartz tattooed right here i like a lot of stones i like citrine a lot because i really believe that you know, it can bring about wealth and abundance. And I think that's really important, you know? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So what's the weirdest experience that you've come across when doing a reading with somebody? <clears throat> well, I haven't done too many, like, personal readings other than ones with, like, friends and family. But, um, you know, definitely the one with Rob stands out to me big time. Um you know, um, I just did one actually just uh, pre pulled cards for the reading that I'm about to record. I'm probably going to record it after this and post it up. But like, it was like a twin flame. Uh, it was like a twin flame kind of like relationship love reading. And it was just like, it just seemed really spot on for what I see a lot of people in my life going through as far as relationships go. Um, so I don't know. They're just, it's just cool how it always kind of knows like, you know, the gathering reading I did, like the gathering card came up and stuff like that. So it's just cool. Yeah. It's very cool. Absolutely. It's crazy how it all works. Like it's wild, right? It is. Well, and it, 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 it makes you think it really I'll, does. I'll just elaborate real quick because this is like what really sealed the deal for me. So the last card in the Rob reading that we did was uh the world and in this deck it's called the juggalo world and it's just a big hat a big red hatchet man on it and the whole write-up is about how rachel lost two friends uh in separate occasions after the gathering in car accidents and that's exactly what i was dealing with and for that card to come up like i never get that card now it never comes up but it came up in that reading and it changed it it really changed my perspective and i found faith knowing that rob was in shangri-la he was supposed to be there like everything was in divine time and it 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 made me feel less sad you know so i don't know 
if if there's if there's things out there that give people hope and faith in the afterlife or it, you know in anything then fuck it you know no absolutely uh, yeah. so we're at 8 30 and i believe you're gonna do a reading for us live here tonight right right yeah, so I know you guys are talking about aliens, and I really think that alien disclosure is going to be a thing very soon. So I just thought maybe I would, um, you know, shuffle the deck and see if any cards want to come out about the possible um, alien disclosure that's going on. Because, you know, we all know that the world is in shambles and things are changing. But I do believe that we have galactic brothers and sisters up there looking out for us. Um, I don't think that aliens are evil and I don't think that they're here to like probe our fucking assholes. I think that <laughs> <laughs> no, like I really think that they're here uh, to have our backs. Um, and the two cards that just flew out there are the warrior of axes and the fool. Um, so we got the ABK card here. Um, which I love because I mean, look at how amazing and beautiful this card is. And uh, our work's insane. Yeah. And you know, the native hatchet warrior here, like this is the, this is the earth card and we're all kind of fighting for our planet right now in one way or another, like shit has to fucking change, you know? Hell yeah, it does. And it's up, it's up to us to change it. But unfortunately, you know, of the world we live in, a lot of us are walking around looking like this, all distracted all the time, you know, and we got our video games and, you know, we got fucking technology in general. There's just so much, you know, and um, for instance, like not having concerts or festivals, shows, like so that was a huge uh, distraction for me, something that I spent a lot of time, money and energy on. And without it, it's really helped me to like focus and look inward and, and not uh, seek all these like external forces all the time. You know what I mean? Us too. We definitely understand you on that one. A lot yeah. of time and money. And it was the therapy concerts. Like not having that that's totally a downer. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, but I keep saying uh, to myself and I keep saying in these readings that I do on YouTube is like, I really think the sacrifice of all of this that we're going through is going to be worth it in the end. Like, I really think um, when it's all said and done, we'll be like, wow, it was worth it missing all those shows. It was worth it not seeing our friends and family. It was worth it not having to wear these goddamn fucking masks all the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I don't know. I just, I hope. That's a I good hope. outlook. Yeah. I just hope that the sacrifices will all be worth it at the end of the day. And then this is the last card. Sorry, this just popped up, but I love this card, you guys. This is Oh, the Wraith card. Yeah. So we got the Wraith, Shangri-La, the Death card. But fear, fear not change. Change is necessary, and it's beautiful, and it's all organic. So, again, it's just like whatever is about to come our way, just take it all in stride and don't be afraid. I love that that card just flew out right now, you guys. And this is <laughs> This is a I little like from Rob and also any of the loved ones that, you know, anyone out there may have, they're saying what up to you right now. So. Oh yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And then talking about change, you know, my hopes is that with all this going on is that when we come out of it and we go back to a normalcy, we don't go back to the normalcy that we had before. We, we go back, we, we come out of it stronger not relying on electronics, not with our head up our ass, but with our head looking forward and not taking for granted the things that we have. Absolutely. Because when this happens, it's like, well, shit, I didn't realize just going to the store without a mask on how much. Right. The you, you little took, things. It's the little things that you took for granted that you realize now. And it's like, fuck, I miss those. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I think this has all put us in check. We all, you know, humanity needed it. Um, it sucks that it's happened in, in such a kind of weird, negative way. But like I said, it's really going to, I think it's really going to pay off. And the fact that these, you know, really strong cards came through and, you know, we're all in this together. That's the, that's what I keep telling myself is like, I am not afraid of what's about to happen. I really think that things are going to change for the better. And we're not, no one's experiencing this alone. Like we're here for a reason. We wanted to be here. 
It's a crazy time to be alive, but what the fuck else will we be doing? You know? It's <laughs> true. <laughs> now, where do you want to see your, your tarot readings go? Do you want to see it take off in a larger scale where you're doing more personal readings or? Yeah. So I really just want to get more YouTube followers and, you know, subscribers um, so that maybe I can get on their monetization program. You know what I mean? Like, and just like make a little passive income. I'm not looking to like make a living off this, you know, or, you know, if people wanted to donate for readings in the future, when I get better, absolutely. You know, I'm open to it, but for now I'm just trying to have fun and learn the cards and, you know, me and my, uh, my homegirls were talking about the possibility of making our own deck. Um, a lot of people are making their own decks and there's really no limits or rules to it because you don't even have to base your cards off of what exists. You can just make your own cards too. So, oh, yeah. so I think we might, um, get together and create our own deck. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I'd love to maybe get with Rachel and, and see if, if the gathering pops off next year. Maybe there's like one night where I can like do some readings at the actual tarot tent, you know, um, at the gathering, something like that. So now when you talk about making your own deck, I know you said there's really no rhyme or reason, if you will. Um, when you put the meanings to the cards and the artwork, is that just something that comes to you while you're designing the cards? Yeah, so like this deck here, it's based off of the traditional Rider Waite tarot. So each card is based off of an existing card. And so, you know, that is definitely nice. But, you know, we were talking about doing like an Oracle deck um, where literally you could just create your own cards and your own descriptions, you know. Um, there's like really no rules, which is so nice because I don't like rules. <laughs> <laughs> Rules are meant to be broken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's like, like really good for you. Absolutely. Um, the one thing that we had to focus on, like being concerts, concert photography, all that good stuff, being taken away. Have you found like a another focal point? Like she has her cards, like something else to keep in mind. Not really. We really haven't. <laughs> we no. keep trying new things though. <laughs> Well, you got the you got this awesome podcast. We do. Well, thank you. We appreciate that. We we we, we try to make it entertaining for <laughs> our dozens and dozens of fans. <laughs> no, it's awesome. This is the wave of the future, and yeah, it's true. Said that she has an angel deck, and that's exactly what we were talking about today. Actually, we were talking about making a Shangri La angel or oracle deck based on Rob and making cards based on fallen juggalos. Because let's face it, if there's juggalos that have passed on, they're young and they and they died young, and it's and it's something to be said and memorialized if they were made into a beautiful card, and each card could have a write up based on the energy of that person. You know, like we could oh, really, cool. make it, yeah, like make I it like a that. community, um, giving back to the juggalo community because that's really all I want to do. That's why I did music. I, that's why I'm doing the Dark Carnival Tarot. Like. All I want to do is give back to a scene that has given me so much, you know? Well, that, that's so true. I mean, that's really where where we met from the Juggalo community. That's where I met Treats and Juggalo. That's where a lot of this thing goes, where everything goes around and around. And oh, yeah. when you really sim sit back to think about it, it's like, shit, like the Juggalo community, you know, people are always bashing on the Juggalo community and ICP and all this. But oh, when yeah. you really think about your own experience, it's crazy like where you've met people where they were there in life now where you're still in contact oh, and when you go to a get and when you go to a gathering i mean you, you know this you're not alone even if you go by yourself you go yeah. to a gathering and it's incredible it's one of the most incredible feelings i can attest absolutely. to absolutely it's the, the power and magic of the of the juggalos and the carnival is super real and if anything it's gotten deeper and uh more rooted and grounded over the years like we're all more connected we're all like you know how there's like that six degrees of separation there's not that in the juggalo world there's maybe one because we all know each other we're all connected um you know and i think we've all been connected uh in this life past lives um and I'm just so proud. 
And what I've noticed is there's a real change in, in society where juggalos used to be like hated on and frowned upon and made fun of. And now it almost seems like people are like, oh, you're juggalo? And they're like intrigued by it. And they're like, they think it's cool. And I don't know. It just seems like juggalos are getting like mad clout compared to, you know, the old days where, you know, we all hate. Yeah. It was hate. It was all hate. You couldn't find the merchant stores. You had to order it online. You say you're going to an ICP show. You're paying it up. You're riding by yourself. People looking at you sideways. Yeah. I mean, I was at the march. I was at the march, and that was only a few years ago. Like a lot's changed just since the march. And I'd like to think that maybe it had something to do with the march. You know? Oh hell yeah. Oh, I would. I would absolutely say something changed because of the march. Mm -hmm. What that change was. No one really can tell, but something did change. Yep. And now, like, ICP is getting a lot of love and respect in the mainstream um, for, like, not having the gathering or, like, being on that Chris Hansen show and just little things. Like, <laughs> and I'm just, like, I'm sitting back and I'm just, like, this is so great. Like, I just love it. Because, like, the world's falling apart. And every other day you hear about this person's a piece of shit. This one's a pedophile. This one sexually assaulted me. This one did this. And I just love to see ICP just sitting back like, yep, yeah, we've been talking about, you know, killing these motherfuckers like racists and bigots and fucking pedophiles. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning of, of the, right. you know, carnival, uh, the Carnival of Carnage saga, you know? So it's just, it's awesome to see everything come full circle. Well, it's crazy because when you brought it up with ICP canceling a gathering because they don't want to risk one juggalo life, but then you got other concerts and they're like, hey, fuck it, we're all in this here now, so let's just have a good time. And even people like like and Tech who perfect. just and Tech who just threw a huge show I not too long ago. Up tech, dude, what the fuck? Like, I know, I thought it was ballsy. You got him. But, you got know. the ride down in Sturbridge, <laughs> the the motorcycle rally with free concerts going on with thousands and thousands of people, and then you got these two guys who have been clowns their entire lives, have this amazing following. And cancel their biggest event of the year because they don't want to risk one life yeah. from anyone. And you know they took a hit because the gathering, oh, yeah. you know. So, you know, it's I'm I'm glad they did the right thing because you know we all would have showed up. Like oh, of course. <laughs> it was like if they built it, we would have come. And like, you know, so I'm glad they didn't have it. But I know a lot of us have been in a bit of a depression. Um, you know. I've missed a few gatherings here and there, but I have friends that go every single year and they're definitely fucked up over it, you know, and I feel for, I feel for our community, but we're just going to gather doubly as hard next year. Hopefully we can still have it at Nelson ledges. Cause that was really going to be amazing to go back to that property um, after all these years. So I don't, I really don't know what the future holds for concerts, festivals, but God damn it. I need some shows. <laughs> Me too. I'm losing it, you guys. Now, were yeah, you going to perform at this gathering, or did you perform at the last gathering? Um, so the, what I did last year was I did a little thing at um, Cannibal's. It was Cannibal's house, R.I.P. Cannibal, of course. Um, I did a couple songs there. Um, CPN. Uh, CPN had a, a thing going on and I just did a couple songs, but the year before that I did perform. Um, I think I've performed at like five or six gatherings now, um, which I love because it's like a staple almost. And, you know, I love, I love the gathering so much. It's the first place I ever rapped in front of anybody ever. Um, and That's I just, awesome. have, yeah. And I have so many oh, memories. Yeah. And then I realized too that um, this year was the 10 year anniversary since the whole Tila Tila uh, Tila Tequila <laughs> uh, bullshit that uh, I forgot about that. Well, yep. I, I wish I could forget about that, but that changed a lot of things for me moving forward in the music shit. I was like, ah, eh, maybe this ain't for me, you know? So, um, what was your first gathering that you performed at? So, what it year was, was it? It was 2004, and it was the MC contest. Okay. And that was the year that Burrow Thugs won, that Tally Demon. Yep. Won. Yeah, so they ended up winning, but that was the first time I ever performed. I went up there, and I rapped Mary Jane, and I have completely forgot my third verse. It was just the beat and me on the mic, and the third verse kicked in, and I was like, 
But then, <laughs> I don't know. I was like, oh, I was beating myself up all weekend. But the whole weekend, ninjas were coming up to me like, yo, I saw you up there. You killed it. And I was like, really? Really? So, like, it inspired me to, like, you know, like, I wasn't even illegal then. I don't even remember. Like, it was, like, it was, like, so far be before all of that. But it definitely inspired me to, to keep at it and... You know, there were no, there were no chick rappers. That was it. It was Tally Demon and me. And that was it. Mm -hmm. So. Now, do you still have any contact with anyone out there in Minnesota with Fresh or anybody like that? Or Yeah. So um, they actually, uh, I think Ruthless was just planning to do a show right before COVID hit. Um, so I think they've been working on some music, which is awesome because. Above anything, I was a huge uh, Ruthless and PLC fan, um, you know, back in the day. And so the fact that they're, um, you know, doing good. I know um, Trest um, and Josh just had their third kid. They're doing good. Like, everyone's doing really good out there. Um, and I send mad love to all those people always. So. Absolutely. I still think PLC should have won. Oh, man. this like 2005. You know, you know what's funny is, like, you know, the memes I see of like, if, uh, you know, Dark Lotus would still be a thing if PLC had won. And I'm like, <laughs> oops, you know what I mean? Because of like everything that's transpired. Um, I mean, everything that's transpired as a result of AMB, you know, winning, but. Well, that, and then you hear the backstories of what, when Otis left Psychopathic and went to MNE and. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Like, you know, there's just a lot of levels. And um, so it's just, it's funny, but, you know, everything, I guess, happened like, you know, as it should. And, um, you know, Tree I really, says, Tree says it was rigged. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, totally agree. I think we were all there, right? Like, I, you know, we all had the coins and it, it was just. It was a shit show. <laughs> I remember so many people when they didn't win, how upset they were. You know, Cryptic, he rode up with us at the gathering that year, and he was so pissed. He was, and there were so many people there that with that contest that AMB shouldn't have won. But it was a weird yeah. saga. And then, like, I saw through the bullshit too because I'm like, yo, Turncoat Dirty became Boondocks, who was signed to Psychopathic, but the actual winners of the contest were signed to Hatchet House. So I just thought that was bullshit too. I'm like, you're gonna take one of the runners up and sign them to the actual head label, uh, take the winner of the contest and sign them to the sub label. I just was like, come on, man. <laughs> Something's dumbass backwards, but here we are 15 years later still talking about it. <laughs> I know, I know. It's quite the saga, but it's all good. I, I love everybody. I have mad love for the PLC guys. I have mad love for AMB. I, you know, it's all love. Like I, I literally like, love this scene so much and i know that there's still beef and drama and obviously not everyone gets along but me and my heart i have love for everybody so and that's the way it has to be you know we're all as sad as it is we're all getting older we're all getting grayer <laughs> you know put the bullshit aside and you know it is what it is we're all here to have fun and you know love one another you know yeah it's, you know still supporting the, the guys out there i see fresh putting out new, new music um, you're doing your thing with the tarot readings, with this, which is hella awesome. Well, so what's what's next for the the Eli Eli? Yeah, I can't fucking talk right now. <laughs> <laughs> what's next in your saga? The Eli Galaxy. I know it's a tongue twister. Um, so besides um, besides work, I am really trying to focus on some new musical endeavors. I don't want to say too much, um, but I am trying to work on some new stuff. A lot has changed. I'm really trying to build up um, some equipment and have my own little studio so I can just make stuff at my own pace. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna keep doing the tarot and um, you know, keep plugging away at the YouTube channel and you know, definitely gonna hopefully make some new music like this next year coming up. Um, it's gonna be my main focus. So we'll definitely keep oh, us yeah. up to date on what's going on, you know, with your tarot readings, the music life with you. We'd love to have you back on when you get some some other things coming up. Yeah, we'll uh, definitely have you on hellentertainment.com too. Yeah. That good stuff to promote Thanks. your YouTube channel. Definitely. Absolutely. So anyone you want to shout out, anyone you want to plug while well, we got you before we let you go? 
Yeah, so I just want to say what up to anyone that may be tuning in from Instagram. I love you guys. Um, any of my friends, Colin, Jasmine, if you guys are watching, I love you. Um, uh, yeah, thank you to um, Rachel for this amazing deck. Um, shout out to Rob, RIP. I love and miss you so much. No, but um, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for having me. And um, yeah, hopefully we can chat again soon. Absolutely. Definitely. We appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. It's good to catch up with you. Um, yeah, let's let's catch up again, and uh, we'll have you on again shortly. All right, cool. And, yeah, hit me up on YouTube. Just uh, search Illy Galaxy and uh, hit the subscribe button. So We'll make sure we put that, we'll put, put that link up on uh, hellentertainment.com when we post the show. Uh, we'll tag you in it so that way you can share it out to all of your alien followers. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> and uh, we'll chat soon. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. She's cool. Oh. That's such so a cool. Cute. Check her out. Illegal Galaxy. That's a fucking tongue twister. Illegal. Illegal. That's I L L E G A L. Yes. Did I don't... go the right way? I don't know. Did you? I don't know. It's all backwards. It's weird. Yeah. I L L E G A L. Yeah. <laughs> So we will post her YouTube page on hellentertainment.com. As always, we are on hellentertainment.com. We are on streaming live on Hellfire Radio, Facebook, <laughs> Hell Entertainment Facebook. And later on tonight, around 930, the Center Sunday's recap. Recap. With us again. Yeah. You to spend more time with us. You're blessed. You're welcome. You are. Um, <laughs> so make sure you hop over there. Instagram.com slash Hellfire Radio 666, where you're going to see me get egged if she's not asleep by my 10 year old. Um, it's going to happen. <laughs> if she's asleep, can I do it? Yes. But then I'm going to have to let her do it again anyway because I promised her. But well, we promised the audience tonight. We did promise the audience tonight. So, Instagram live that's on hellfire radio instagram hellfire radio 666 be there the center sunday's recap as always amy young photography demon of the month hellentertainment.com amy young photography.com and uh that was a good show that was a yeah well good. everyone was really quiet tonight but that's all right it's a quiet crowd it's, okay. but it's all right we had a great guest. She'll be up on all of our sites. Make sure you head to her YouTube. Subscribe. Illegal Galaxy. Jeff from a talking talking with the dead was in here earlier. So sorry we missed you, Jeff. But oh, thank you for said. tuning in. You just said hi. Oh. But we make sure you recognize. Hi, Jeff. Make sure you guys check out Talking with the Dead. They have their show every Wednesday night on their Instagram on Hellfire Radio Instagram from seven <laughs> to eight 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 thirty. Also, you can listen to their show on the Live 365 app. <clears throat> I just want to point out to our viewers of, as you can see, how many lights Dick's had to turn on because apparently I just look too dark tonight. It's because you. But now, look how pasty I look in the feed. The live, the feed. It's not this one, but. The feed going through. Yeah. Yeah, well. So, uh, all right. <laughs> but <all> right. yes, <laughs> just want to point that out. We have, let's see, one, eight, that's it. Something oh, like nine. Eight. We got lights everywhere. They're all little lights. We're, uh, on that note, we're going to play out one of our commercials. <laughs> and I'm going to go Egg Digs, Instagram Live. Check it out. Sitting all alone, all alone. Time to hit the liquor store. Time to hit the liquor store. Eat some trees that I can blow. I've been selling dope since the 10.
fifth grade. Nothing but critters over this way. Walking up talking that shit. Hey, me and my niggas like bitch plays. I've been selling dope since the tenth grade. Nothing but critters over this way. Walking up talking that shit. Hey, me and my niggas like bitch plays. I think it's pretty obvious right about now who you're looking at, but I'll tell you anyhow. I'm Shaggy Too Dope, the Southwest Strangler. And I'm Bonnie J, the Duke of the Wicked. And together we happen to be the, the Insane Clown, Clown Posse. Posse. And right about now, it's time to get a big, big, big fat shout out to Hell's Entertainment. They're a media outlet for all touring artists. They offer videography, design work, photography, motherfucking Fresh Allergy. Are you a touring artist? Do you get out there and grind? Or are you a boring artist? Do you sit home and whine? Because if you're a worker, hook up with Hell's Entertainment. That's right, Hell's Entertainment. You can reach them at www.hellentertainment.com. And if you're not done with that, go to hell. 